Hello, I am excited to talk books tonight. Tonight is a little different than last night. If you were here last night, I had a lot of books and I loved them all. Tonight is not quite so much of a love fest. So the first book that I'm talking about tonight is this title called Fearless, the story of Daphne Caruana Galizia. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not 100% sure. Um, Defender of Free Speech. So I chose this book to review because it's about a female journalist who is from Malta. So she's Maltese, um, who's from Malta, who um, really worked hard to uncover like government corruption and lots of things like that. She had all kinds of terrible things happen to her. Like people, they, they killed her dogs. They, I mean, it was terrible froze her bank accounts. It was a mess, arrested her. And I thought, this is a great story. So I really was interested in this book. And it is good, but I can't give it a wholehearted recommendation. So let me share what I like and what I don't like about this one. And it may be a good fit for you. So um, the illustrations are quite interesting to me. It's a blend of like black and white line drawing along with some like coloration in it that's kind of nice. It's a they've simplified the story quite a bit. So it can be approached even by really young kids. They leave out like at the end it doesn't say how she died, which is how she was killed in a bomb. Um, so they they leave that part out. Um, and they do talk about how she fought for different things. So there's there's some good um, parts of it. In the back, there's more information and pictures of her. What I don't like um, is I think it's maybe too oversimplified. I mean, I know it's a picture book. I get it that it's for young children. But I feel like maybe in the back, it could have been deeper. Um, there could have been more specifics in it about the kinds of things that she was trying to do. And I think that it could have been stronger in the message that it has for younger people today who might be interested. I do love some of the particular ideas. There are a couple of pages that I feel like really redeem it. And this is one of them. On this page, it says, books taught Daphne to never let other people think for her. She loved the freedom of asking questions and then making up her own mind. Her own mind. So I, I loved that. Um, uh, this may be picky, but I don't like the font. I don't like the font of the story. And, and that is a turnoff for me. Um, I just don't know. I'm going to hold it close. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, you can. I, I just don't care for that font. So that, that was just one thing. But in general, I would say this is a good story if you're looking for an approachable book that is culturally diverse, that is um, that has a good story and a strong moral and is um, an, an interesting story for a time and features a strong female. If that interests you and you like the illustration style, which I do, um, then this is great. If you are looking for something a little deeper, this or you, like me, are also a font snob, this one might not be the best fit. The next one is, uh, so, okay, so that one I can't recommend 100%, but this one I totally do. So this book is called Nano, The Spectacular Science of the Very, Very Small. And it is written by a scientist. Well, no, actually, yes, it is written by a scientist. This one's written by a scientist. Two of these, two of these books tonight are written by professors. One a scientist, one a humanities professor. This one is written by scientists. It had me right here at this illustration. Um, it's talking about what things are made of. And it goes, it starts out like everything in your house is made of something. And then it goes down to atoms, right? And, it, and it's such um, it's such a sensible progression that even really young kids can understand this. But this scene on these two pages, on this two page spread, reminded me so much of Richard Scarry's best word book ever that I instantly fell in love. The cutout of a house and the cutaway of a house and all the little things in it. But this is saying like what the different things are made out of. So as this book goes through, it breaks down like 
How do you find atoms? And what are these things made of? And then it goes into nanotechnology. And it specifically focuses on um, a nanomaterial called graphene and the things that we're currently doing with graphene um, and then things that graphene they think will be able to do that graphene will be able to um, that graphene will be able to make filters be have filters made out of graphene that will be able to take salt water and make it potable and it shows like the illustrations of it are so gorgeous like you think of of science books as having like either very very realistic real um illustrations which is great but this has this almost fanciful and yet accurate and scientific illustration the combination of them to me is just unbeatable i mean Again, with the font, I don't like the font at all. Um, so I don't know. Candlewick, who's ever doing your font design? I don't like it. Um, I think that this book is really good for teaching some basic chemistry. It teaches the idea that there are elements, there are a hundred of them. They're on a table where they're organized, what some different ones are. It shows even some different um, atomic structure, molecular structure. Um, and it is... It is approachable to even young children, but I was fascinated by it, and I'm obviously not a young child. So I feel like it really does a good job of that. But I also love, and obviously I love the illustrations, but I also love the message of it because it's talking about at the end of the book, it talks about how it takes years of testing to find out if new materials are safe to use and blah, blah, blah. Scientists all over the world are helping to speed that process along by sharing advice and new ideas. As you read this book, they are conducting experiments, making some not so nano mistakes. I love that. I feel like that needs to be a phrase. Like it needs to be a hashtag, not so nano mistake. So cool. Um, and then it says nanotech, um, nanoscience is a work in progress and it's going to be the work of years and years to come. There are so many secrets left for scientists to unlock. And who knows, the person with the key might just be you. So if, if you um, are looking for a book that can encourage young scientists, encourage people who might not normally be interested in science to get interested in it, um, it, it also, I use a lot of depth and complexity when I'm teaching, and this has a lot of wonderful, like multiple perspectives and unanswered questions and big idea and like so much going on in this book. So I really, really do love the beautiful progression of how it goes from like all the world around you all the way down to nanotechnology or um, nanoscience and, and in a way that makes sense. So I highly, I highly recommend this. Um, it is written by Dr. Jess Wade, illustrated by Melissa Castrillon and Nano, the spectacular science of the very, very small. The links to these books are in the description box of the YouTube video. Okay, the next one is for a much younger audience. So teacher likes it, Richard Scary. Richard Scary's best word book ever is the best book ever. Just love it. So this next one is for much younger children. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. This is the sing along with me. So the child sings along, twinkle, twinkle, little star. And this book is not a standard pop-up. It has things on each page that move. And that does a couple of things. Number one, um, the, oh, well, first of all, these illustrations, I'll put it forward. These look to me like old Margaret Wise Brown. There's an old Margaret Wise Brown called the Color Kittens. Um, and this, this illustration just looks like, Margaret Wise Brown is the one who did Good Night Moon, um, but not the illustrations for it. But these look like the illustrations to an old Margaret Wise Brown book called the Color Kittens, and they're really nice. But each of the activities on the page is a little it's not a pop-up it's an engaging thing but it doesn't actually pop up and the thing that i like about that like these things turn um they, and they spin with the you spin them on the side um and this one slides up there's another one that slides up the thing i like about that is that it's a lot more sturdy so if you have a younger child a lot of times the flat books they get torn and this is a lot sturdier now that means though that it, it it has very thick pages if you see this because they need to have the space in them for those spinning wheels and so if you um 
if you're in the market for a board book for a small child or baby, even the cover moves, which is really unusual and I like it. Uh, this is the third book in a row though that I'm not thrilled with the font. So it, it's fine. There's not that much text, so I wouldn't let it dissuade me. This is one definitely that I would, if I saw this and went through it, I would definitely buy it for a baby in my life. So sing along with me, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And this is from the no Nosy Crow line of their books, and all of theirs are, are great. All right. Okay, now I'm going to get to the two that I think are must-have. Well, no, you know what? I feel that way about the Nano book as well. But the last two... I absolutely love this. Ada and the Galaxies. These next two books are, to me, absolute must-haves. So Ada and the Galaxies is written by um, Alan Lightman, a professor, who is um, writing with, like, there, there's actually two authors and an illustrator. And it's so fabulous. The illustrations in here are absolutely amazing. And he wrote this book, um, to it was like inspired by his own like children or grandchildren i can't remember which one now um inspired by his granddaughter's visits to maine so i guess where he lives so he talks about how she lives in new york and it's hard to see the stars because of light look at these illustrations oh the watercolor oh i just love it so much they're beautiful these are this is the kind of picture book that's like art like you could cut the pages out and hang them on the wall and frame them. And people would be like, that's beautiful. And you're like, I cut it out of a picture book. Just gorgeous. Like, so it's about this young girl who goes to visit her grandfather and she likes to look at the stars, but she has to wait all day. They go do all these things together all day. And she keeps wanting to look at stars. And then finally it's nighttime. Oh, again, with the pictures, I just can't say enough about the illustrations in this book. But the story itself is sweet. Like the girl calls her grandfather Pooba, which is such a cute grandpa name. Okay, but then the illustrations get even more amazing because I think this is such a unique proposition in the art. The artist actually takes photographs from the Hubble telescope and incorporates them into the art. So there are these beautiful watercolors and then these actual images of the stars taken with the Hubble. And I just think that that is absolutely incredible. And she's, and she asks the, she's asking some questions. And as she's asking questions, he's answering them. And one of the questions she asks is like, are there people there? And he's like, well, probably some kind of people, but not people like you and me. And she says, I think they're lonely because they're so far away. And he says, well, they might be looking at us right now, wondering if we're lonely. It's just such a cool idea. And then they go out at night to look at the stars together. And this illustration alone is worth the book. I mean, it's so beautiful. And she yells out, hello, you other people. And I just think that is so sweet. And then good night, you other people. And I just think it's so nice. And then in the back, there's a little bit of extra stuff about looking at the night sky. But this to me, if you are looking for a book for a child for um, just a good night story, this is a perfect um, nighttime bedtime story. But this is also a beautiful classroom read. There's so much to look at. And it, I think it's a wonderful introduction to space and the stars and capturing that curiosity and interest in them. So Ada and the Galaxies super, super, super great book. It got two thumbs up from me, both of my thumbs. All right, the last one. Uh, this one intrigued me because of the title. I'll tell you, I ordered this one from them. Again, all of these books were supplied to me um, in exchange for an honest review from Candlewick, the publisher. So um, just I, I think I'm required by law to say that. So um, I would say, though, that Ada and the Galaxies is one I would definitely run out and buy. This one, once upon a time, there was and will be so much more. This one I chose from the catalog because of the title. I loved the title. Once upon a time, there was and will be so much more. Just the hope in that is, is so beautiful. So this one is written by Johanna Scheibel. 
and um, she is uh, the, the author and illustrator. And as soon as I opened the book, the illustrations reminded me, I'm not sure if it's very clear in that one, maybe um, another picture would be more clear, but they, they remind me so much of Eric Carle. I'm not sure it comes through clearly enough um, in the two dimensionality of a screen, but her illustrations remind me so much of Eric Carle. This book is absolutely stunning in its design. Now, um, I think that it's something that very few books have, which is where the book itself is designed in a way that you can feel that there was strong intentionality in the design and really unique. I mean, the design of this is creative. Let me show you what I mean. If you open the book along its spine in the middle, the pages, the pages are actually different sizes. It ends up in the middle with the smallest pages. And then, so as you start the book, you're in a big page and it starts with billions of years ago. And then as you advance through time, the pages get smaller. So you're millions of years ago, hundreds of thousands of years ago, thousands of years ago, a hundred years ago, 10 years ago, a month ago, right? It goes on and then it's now make a wish. And then it starts progressing through time. What time will you get up in the morning? Where will you be in the afternoon? What will you do tomorrow evening? What will the weekend bring? Who will you meet next month? Mm -hmm. How will you celebrate your birthday next year? And it just goes through time. Where will you live in 10 years? What will you discover when you're grown up? What sites will stay with you always? It just goes through. And, and then in the very end, it says, what do you wish for the future? And it ends like that with this beautiful design. And so, and it, the, the inscription, the dedication thing is in the back and it says, for the adults of tomorrow and the children of yesterday. I just love, like, I just loved it. So Johanna Scheibel just hit it out of the park with this one. The, the design of the book, the text, the ideas um, are just something so unique. And I feel like this is exactly the kind of thing that gifted kids, that bright kids thrive on. They love this kind of thing. And not only the text, but the design. Yeah, it's so unusual. And I, I highly recommend it. Eric Carle-like illustrations, so beautiful. Just this beautiful progression through time. And I think that this book is a really good one for teachers to have, to teach that idea of the progression of time. This is a book that I think could work equally well in a kindergarten classroom and a 12th grade classroom. Like I would absolutely use this with my high school students. Um, it, it, its design is so clever. If you're an art teacher, this is an amazing, an amazing thing. So those are the books for tonight. Tomorrow night, I have another pile and tomorrow's pile is quite different and has um, another absolute must have in it. So um, just to recap tonight, Fearless, the story of Daphne um, Caruana Galizia has kind of a mild recommendation, nice illustrations, thought the story was a little soft, hate the font. Um, then Nano, another awesome science book, really, really good. So we had a couple of science ones tonight. Nano and then Ada and the Galaxies must have, must have. Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, really fabulous board book if you're um, looking for a young child or even a child who's a little bit older. One of the things, I didn't mention this when I was doing the review of this one, but I feel like it's a good thing to say, is that these books can also work with children who may be um, on, on the autism spectrum. And because, it, because of this interaction, and because of how tactile it is. So I think even a little bit older children beyond the board book stage normally. And then um, tonight's absolute hit it out of the park. Once upon a time there was and will be so much more. Um, this book is the, the book of the night. So, well, you know what? It's a tie. The book of the night, the books of the night, Ada and the Galaxies and this one. So I hope to see you tomorrow night and um, for another look at um, some of the great titles out and coming out from Candlewick this fall. See you later.